Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? How you doing, baby? I'm fresh up out the bed. Listening to some uh, me. I hope it's a wonderful morning for you out there. Oh yeah. Get your coffee. Get your coffee. Get your coffee. I got my water today. Coffee, get your coffee. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, I'm I'm in the baseball room today. I started I started in the fucking sports and baseball sports talk baseball today. I don't know what I'm on, man. We always on some different shit. You always know. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure things out right now, baby. I'm trying to figure things out right now. Stop and go. That stop and go. Oh, that stop and go. Yeah. So I apologize if uh. You came to this bitch looking for baseball and you ain't find it yet. It's gonna be here, baby. It's gonna be here. Stop and go. Stop and go. Oh, that's stop and go. Yeah, so yesterday was a struggle. Yesterday was struggle bus. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If you in this bitch, say hi. If you in this motherfucker, say hi. Speak to your boy. Yeah, man. What the deal, yo? How you doing? Good morning. So I like, I like the, uh, I like the first. Just thank God. I made it on time today. It's progress, baby. It's progress, baby. Secondly, um, I got my audio semi right. I mean, y'all still gonna hear shit like this. Y'all still gonna hear, you know, buttons getting pressed and shit, but y'all can hear my voice now. My voice is, is clear, it's crispy, it's nice and loud, it's full, it's thick. I got a motherfucking mic hanging like right here. It's actually right here, right? It's like right off camera. I had it, I had it closer before, and I have rap. Like, let me see. Can I show you all this shit without fucking everything up? All right, let's see. Uh, no, y'all can't see it because it's like green screen, you know? But basically, there's a mic right above my head. But what I did was, this is the most clever shit I ever did in my life, probably. I wrapped a green t-shirt around the bitch so you can't see it. You see that? Oh my God. Look, yeah. Um, let me see. yeah, I wrapped a green t-shirt around a bitch, so you can't see it. Uh, I'm only monitoring myself in one ear so far, and I'm actually probably about to lose that shit, because I just needed to test it, see how it sounded. I ain't look at it on a video yet, I got the video going, but hey man, let's just move on. So, Phillies baseball, if you don't know, it is my weakness. That shit is, I was super depressed in 2020. Niggas ain't had nowhere to go, nothing to do, nothing to look forward to. So I got into the habit of watching sports around the end of 2019. I was like, I'm, I'm a heavy musician. All I did my whole life was worry about making music. I don't play sports. I don't, um, I don't, I didn't play video games until very recently. Like very recently, 
So I've been spending all of my time making music, trying to make that shit pop, trying to make my homies pop, making beats for the homies, making songs for the homies, making sites, social medias for the homies, also running my own shit to the ground. Um, yeah, so 2019, late 2019, I was struggling with uh, being drunk every fucking day and uh, not necessarily having nothing that I was working on, not necessarily having no passion, no plan, no purpose. So late 2019, I was telling my homies, I was like, yo, not, not my homies, I was telling my coworkers, I was like, yo, I'm tired of going out drinking after work every night. I need to buy myself a video game so that the $200 that I spent on that video game, that shit will pay itself off in less than a week because I spend more than $200 a week drinking after work. So uh, I bought myself an Xbox. Um, the first game I bought with it was Red Dead. That shit, long gone. But I played Red Dead for years. Not exaggerating. Years. So, uh, I bought Red Dead. I bought my Xbox. And it took me about a good week or two to actually get in the habit of fucking Xboxing. You know? Staying in the crib. Not going out. Not chasing a party. And just, like, fucking be self-satisfied. Chill. Be content. And, and uh... So I got slightly into the habit of it. It wasn't necessarily that big, but then the pandemic came. Once the pandemic came, you know, everybody got all fucked up. I was working at a concert venue at the time, so there was nothing for us. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning. Get your coffee. Hope you enjoy the show. I'm just sitting here telling my story right now. Um, just basically getting getting y'all caught up to who I am and why I do what I do. What I'm out here trying to get accomplished and shit. So, uh, yeah. Um, I bought my video game in 2019 because I ain't want to fucking drink no more all the time. And then in 2020, March 2020, I was still working at a concert venue and then the whole world shut down. And once the whole world shut down, obviously, I ain't have very much to do. But one of the things that I told myself also in late 2019 when I bought that video game was... Sports is always on. I should fucking learn to care about sports. I actually remember I told somebody that during the World Series that uh look at that shit. Look at that shit. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? Look at that shit. That's from fucking Mortal Kombat. Anyway, I actually remember telling somebody during the Astros and Washington Nationals World Series that uh I need to start watching sports, man. I really need to start caring about sports. So, during the pandemic, everything stopped. There was nothing going on. But you know what there was? Korean baseball. And Korean baseball fucking really kind of started it up. It ignited that love for me. And then after that, the first thing that started off was spring training for Phillies. I watched Jojo Romero pitch for the first time and gave a fuck. And I was like watching the Phillies play the Phillies during spring training because, you know, niggas couldn't travel. They still had to figure out how people was moving around and interacting with each other and stuff. And social distancing and shit. Social distancing and shit. Sorry, I turned my um, my head away from the mic and I got a fucking I got a noise gate on there. I'm still playing with it. But uh, yeah, so I started watching spring training baseball and that is what ignited my love. That is what ignited my love. So ever since then, man, I've been watching all three sports every day. <laughs> yeah, you see how I did that? All three sports every day, all the fucking time. I tried watching the Flyers, but they won 13 games on a nigga. And I was, like, really paying attention that season. So I'm, like, kind of disappointed in them. And they're going to have to prove that they really want to rebuild to get my motherfucking money and my time out of my, you know, my heart. Um, so... I was going to start off playing this song, Don't Quit, because uh, yesterday I was fucking frustrated. Um, I was so frustrated. And then obviously I took two days off before that. But you know what? Today I feel encouraged. Yesterday I went out and I bought a hub, a USB hub. So I'm able to hook up my camera and hook up my audio at the same time. I got the game running through all good. I do be having issues with monitoring and shit still, but... That really just comes down to closing the program, opening that shit back up, whatever the case may be. Y'all niggas don't want to hear that. Let's get to the baseball. So yesterday, in 
proper romantic fashion. First off, I want to start off with this word of the day shit. Now it's funny because I listen to the sports talk radio occasionally and in my local city, there's a gentleman who does a show and he has a word of the day on his show. And uh, I don't really like it. I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's relevant to what he be doing. And oftentimes it's just another way for him to fill airspace with shit I don't give a fuck about. But today, I, guess what? Wait for it now. Today, I've decided to steal that word of the day shit. Now, I'm not taking it from him. I'm actually taking it from my Miriam Webster dictionary on my phone. Because that shit gives me a word of the day every morning. As soon as I wake up, it's kind of like one of the first things I see. You know, stock market, scripture, sorry, scripture, stock market, word of the day. Everybody's texts and shit And uh, social media is not existing in my life Unless I choose for it to be So then that um, So today's word of the day man It's gonna be romance It's gonna be romance You know why? Because today Is a day where I have decided to fall in love I've decided to fall in love It's a commitment It's a choice baby And I made that choice I made my bed I'm about to lay in that shit Butt naked. So today, the word of the day is going to be romance. And I think there's no better word to describe baseball. Baseball, man. Now, most of my homies, they don't give a fuck about baseball. Everybody watches basketball. Everybody watches football. But don't nobody really give a fuck about baseball. I got a couple of white homies that I work with. Or a couple of white homies that uh, I done met over the years. Because I'm, I'm a... My, my trade, my line of work is bartending. So I meet people. Uh, but I got a lot of homies that I'm cool with that I know. Or I got a lot of homies that I've been friends with for some years that they don't give a fuck about baseball. But I got a couple friends that I've met in recent years that do give a whole lot of fucks about baseball. So I've been, you know, talking to those people a little bit here and there. But one thing I noticed about the game myself that I picked up on that I enjoy is the romance. I don't know how and I don't know why they manage to do it every time, but every game is always somebody's first something or there's always a record being broken or there's always somebody's family in the stands or there's a story. There's a wonderful fucking, you know, underdog fight story that'll inspire your ass. So, yesterday did not disappoint. Now, Right now, the Phillies, uh, I think it's a four, are in the middle of, not the middle, are in the end of a four-game series with the Nationals, which is fitting because Trey Turner, Rice, you know what I mean. Now, last we spoke about this, I was talking about how all the Philly fans took it upon themselves to make Trey Turner, you know, uh, a standing ovation and honor him. And I was all the way down for that shit. I love it. Because, you know, people call us, like, Negadelphia. People feel like we don't actually, like, I don't know. People feel like we don't enjoy our sports. They feel like we just enjoy the pain and the suffering. They feel like we just want to, like, run people off and shit. But, nah, let me, let, me, uh, let me flip that narrative a little bit. What it actually, what I think it actually is, is that motherfuckers in this city really care about sports because... We got universities, they all sports based and shit. Other than that, we got an art museum. We got uh, a convention center. But really, in this city, it's all restaurants and it's teams. And we got a major team for every sport or every major sport. And then we have a long list of suburbs all around us of people who claim this city. I think I explained that one day on here. So, in Philly, you got a lot of motherfuckers who pay attention to a lot of games. You know what I'm saying? When that basketball season start, it be cold outside, nigga. It really do. Even when baseball season end, it start getting cold outside. So, in football season, it's cold outside. So, you know what motherfuckers is doing? You know what motherfuckers is doing? Sitting in the house, watching TV. Preferably sports. I don't know nobody that watches It's Always Sunny. I'm not I'm not going to lie. I know a lot of people that watch It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, but I don't. So, yeah, we care about our sports. We work real hard. We want to see everybody win. We want to see our teams win. 
we root these niggas on hard. We feel like we the sixth man on the court. So that shit was exhibited no better than I've ever seen it in my life than throughout this weekend. I believe it was Thursday or Friday that they decided to give Trey Turner a standing ovation in the middle of an 0 for 16, which is like the biggest slump of his career. Nigga hadn't hit no homer since, I don't know, I feel like it was like spring training damn there. But it had to be like the month of April and no later. So yeah, Trey was struggling, struggling. He was a struggle bus. But let me tell you, this city, we had two options. And I've seen both of them exercised. One option was to sit there and say how brutal he is. Sit there and say that nigga ain't worth all that money. And we could put up those types of numbers with that for, for $300 million. Like as individuals, like I could put, I could go out on the field and put up those types of numbers. But that's not true. But I've seen that happen. And I'm pretty sure he's been seeing that happen for a couple months. But the whole city as one, I don't know whose decision it was. I'm going to say Jack Fritz was the first person, the first person that I heard mention it. Um, but he said, yo, let's go for a standing ovation for Trey. And I, I was on Twitter and I was like, that is a great fucking idea. And then the next day, oh no, that night they did it. And it was huge. It was fucking huge. The first John lasted about 20 seconds. The second one lasted about 35 seconds. He actually got a hit on the third one, I believe it was, or the second one. They gave him a standing ovation for all four at-bats. Then the next game, they continued the standing ovations. I believe it was a day game, the next game on Saturday. They continued. They gave him, oh yeah, I remember because I was on this bitch on Saturday. And I was like, yo, I get to watch baseball. I fell asleep like a motherfucker. I watched it though. I watched it later that night. But um, the nigga home run. The nigga hit a home run. Oh, matter of fact, now I was recording my podcast. And on TRM Podcast, shout out to the homie Tretch. I was telling him, and then I was telling him about the ovation, and then Trey hit a homer. So Trey hit a homer after slumping for 0 for 16, and then getting a standing ovation. He hits out of that 0 for 16 the night they start, and then the very next day, he hits a homer. Now that's romance. That is fucking romance. I will absolutely love to take credit for what happened in his career. But nah, he's a fucking great baseball player. You knew that shit wasn't going to last forever. But that's the awesome part. We as the fans, we knew that shit too. We knew that shit wasn't going to fucking last forever. So I think if you on a you on the side where you wasn't bitching about it and you didn't think it was soft and you thought it was shit, why not? I want to see the ball succeed for the time that he's here. He's going to be here for a long time. I think that right there is a, uh, that's romance. You're going to be on the good side of history. Because I think what happened this weekend in Philadelphia was historical. I think that shit was real big for sports. Philadelphia sports definitely, but for sports. So, my nigga Trey, when he hit his home run, he came out, he did a curtain call, took his hat off, waved that bitch around, said thank you. Oh, damn, I just smacked the shit out of him, Mike. I hope that wasn't problematic for y'all. Anyway, he did all that. It was fly. It, it was, sorry, it was fly. It was fire. He did all that. And then you know what this motherfucker did? Kept hitting. Kept hitting. He went, he went on a, uh, I think it was like a 6AB hitting streak. And he's got a hit every game since that game. Since that game. You know what else he did? He went and got a billboard to say, thank you, Philly. I appreciate all you've done. Thanks for having my back. Now, I ain't look it up. I ain't see the billboard. I ain't going to lie. That's a, little, that's a little on the mushier side for my taste. But that shit right there, bro, that's romance. That's fucking romance. So right now, you know what I got with Trey Turner in my life? Romance. Romance. You know what I got with these Phillies? These Phillies. These NL champion Phillies. Romance. I got romance. I got romance. So, let me tell you about this game yesterday. We in the middle of this. Uh, and it's funny because Trey just started hitting just in time for this fucking Washington series. I always love to beat the fuck up on Washington considering, you know, we got 
two good players from them. It'd be nice to have a third. It'd be nice to have Soto. But it's cool. We got two of their best players. So, sticking with the theme of romance. As we play these, uh, these Washington Nationals, yesterday's game was not that special. You had Lorenzen on the plate. You know, the lineup had actually gotten switched around considerably. They had Trey hitting back in the front of the lineup. I don't think he was leading off, if I remember correctly. I feel like Alec Bohm. I don't know. They gave Schorber the day off, so I know the whole lineup was fucked up. I ain't. I don't, I'm not used to seeing Schwarber with the day off. If he ain't in the field, he'd be at least DHing. But uh, they gave Schwarber a day off, so I don't remember who let off. But Trey was doing great. This was the third, uh, no, this was the fourth game of the series. And I guess the best way of saying it that, I guess the best way of saying it is, <clears throat> my expectations wasn't very high. Because the guy, Lorenzen, I don't really know him all like that. I don't really know where he's from. I don't know his history and shit. But I know he did really well last time he pitched. So you know what? The rule of averages, law of averages. I expected him to not do really well this time when he pitched. So first inning comes. He walks a couple guys and shit. Uh, side note. There was a gentleman in this game named Weston Wilson. He had just gotten called up. Yesterday was his first day playing in the major leagues. He was a big motherfucker. He was a big tank. Big tank. Like, nigga was big. Nigga was, he wasn't Derek Hall big, but he pretty big. He pretty big. He came up to his first at-bat and motherfucking homered. It was beautiful. It was very romantic. His whole family. He had 14 people come to the fucking park to watch him hit. And I be thinking about that, yo. Like, imagine, you know... I did this. I do this thing that's my dream. I do this thing that I love. And I go and invite a whole bunch of people that I love to come and watch me do it. Which, as y'all can tell, is not popping in this bitch. I don't have mad people from my family and my personal life coming to my Twitch to show love. I wish I did. But I'm not hitting them motherfuckers up and saying, hey, come watch me talk about baseball. Because I know them in real life. And they don't give a fuck about baseball. Now, Weston Wilson... His parents, his family, the people around him, they had a vested interest in his career. And his career is baseball. So, my man had 14 people in the park. And I be thinking, too, at-bats at bats are tense, man. ABs is tense. Major League ABs, even more tense. And my man got 14 of his family members in the crowd watching him. Imagine what's going through his head right then, right? This motherfucker hits a homer. It was beautiful. It was so romantic. Family started going crazy. His dad, who coached him, started crying and shit. His wife popped up just in time for it. You know what I mean? Like, it was wild. They was going crazy. Nick Castellano's son was sitting there, sitting with him, hanging out. You know, every time, every time Boy did something cool, and Boy did a bunch of cool shit, he ended up stealing the bases. He ended up making a play in the field. Every time he did something cool, uh, little little uh, Liam Castiano sitting right there. Like, oh my God, you see your boy? Yeah, Liam is a fixture in the park. Uh, so, I forget when it was. I think it might have been the third. Nick hits a fucking bomb. A bomb. And it was beautiful because Nick's been doing great since Miami. Nick Castiano's hit a bomb for us. So, we went up. Game continues. My man, Weston Wilson hits a jaw. Nick Castellanos hits a John. Next thing you know, Bryce Harper hits a John. Right? Cal's not playing. No big deal. Alec Vaughn, Bryson Stott, everybody hitting. Everybody looking good. Brandon Marsh is still injured. Sosa was playing. Rojas was playing. Rojas was hitting. And then, all of a sudden, I notice it's the seventh. Lawrenson's still in. And ain't no hits on the board. Now, my nigga walked about four people. But it wasn't no hits on the board. And I have never actually watched a no-no live. Like, I always, um, I get the updates on my phone and it'd be like, what's the name's throwing a no-no? Or what's the name's throwing a shh? 
And then I go and watch the rest of the game and then, you know, with bated breath like the rest of the fans. But with my Phillies, games that I watch every day, I ain't never been in the midst of it and been like, oh shit, it's a John. So apparently it's like superstitious to not talk about it, but I'm not superstitious, so. I'm not superstitious, so I don't give a fuck. But looked up and it was like the seventh and my man was, there was no hits on the board. And he was at about 100 pitches. And they usually don't let niggas go past 100 pitches. But uh, I don't know why. I don't know how. Maybe it had something to do with the trade and the time he had off because of the trade. But Rob Thompson, skipper, as he calls him, topper, let that nigga keep going. And Lawrenson finished with a fucking no-hitter. 121 pitches. Full game. Full game. That don't even happen no more, bro. Romance. How much more romance can you pack into one two and a half hour time slot? Because that right there is crazy. So they interview Weston Wife's Wes. They interview Wes Wes Weston Wilson's wife. She was gorgeous, you know. Uh, and I mean that in, in a respectful way. I don't like looking at motherfuckers' wives and shit. I look at girls. But I don't like looking at motherfuckers' wives and shit. But uh. They interviewed his wife and she was saying like, yeah, when I heard about it, he had called me and was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be starting in the big league. And she was like, oh my God, but he sounded sad about it. And I was like, word. And then they interviewed his dad who, you know, he was hyping, he was crying and shit. And he was just like, I was just trying to tell him it's about the journey. It's not about the destination. That's what I tell him every day. It's about the journey. And you know what? That shit put things in perspective for me, and it, 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 it shed a little bit of light. And I was like, you know, this is humbling. This has got to be real humbling for this guy. Because one thing that I didn't mention that they mentioned on the broadcast, he's 28. All right? You know what that means? Do you know what that means? That means that in most people's opinion, he's past his prime, and he's definitely too old to come up. So realistically, he ain't going to have no big league career. That was a moment for him. And in his baseball career, he probably won't have very many of those moments. First off, that was his first at-bat. And he homered on his first at-bat. Only, I forget, 20, 127 other people have ever done that in the history of Major League Baseball. And that's a long history. That's like one nigga a year, pretty much. So he did that. While his family was there, which is awesome. And then uh, he's going to go back down. And who knows if he'll come back up ever. You know, there's no promise. There's no promise that him hitting a home run is going to be enough to make him come back up. There's still other niggas. You know, we got Derek Hall down there. You know what I'm saying? We got jetpacks down there. You know, this shit going on. So. You know, we got Pache down there. There's a couple of players that, you know, if given the opportunity, I'm not really sure I'd be worried about him. There's Nick Cave down there, you know? So, yeah, when it comes to these minor league players, man, that, that was a moment for him. And I don't know if, like, I don't know if that boy's ever going to see that again. Like, he probably ain't going to get too many major league opportunities and shit. At 28 years old, I don't really see it. I don't really see too many people investing in him like that. But that moment was huge. That moment was fucking huge. So I'm going I'm to give that to his wife. Fucking sticking with him. And I'm going to give that to his father. For having having a, a cool head about the whole situation. And letting him know like yo the journey is what matters. And I'm going to be honest man. That shit inspired me. His pop. His pop who coaches him. His pop gave me some encouraging words. That were actually inspiring to me. And, and that shit was basically the same thing yo. It's about this journey. Twitch uses a bunch of different uh, language but one of the things that I noticed that stands out to me is that that journey that twitch journey I started this whole thing and they looked at it like a journey I looked at it like a means to some type of end but they was looking at it like the means you know so yeah that was romantic that played out exceptionally well and I love how it affected my life um now if you take that only one nigga pretty much a year does that 
hits a home run at his first at bat. But then you take that and you let him say, yo, I, I, I hit a home run my first at bat. And it was during a no hitter. And it was on our side. Our team won. That's a hell of a fucking story. That's nice. That's nice when it comes to this romance stuff. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, anyways, that was a that was that one game yesterday. Um, by the end of the game, a lot of people was crying. It was a lot of motherfuckers that was like just on on go on a hundred, you know, on airs. I watched both post games. Shout out to Lorenzo. He gave all glory to God. Um, shout out to Weston. He thanked his wife for everything. Uh, and his father. Um, and Lorenzen, his his wife and his mom was in the building with his nine month old, bro. That's just romance, man. That's goddamn romance. All right, I done said it too much. I'm going to stop saying it now. I'm going to stop saying it now. I'm going to stop saying it now. So, anyway. I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. So with that said, the Phillies are in control of our own destiny. We're doing great. Uh, we lead the wild card right now. And it's only uh, us and the Giants that I'm concerned about. And the Giants have a very difficult schedule going to the end of the season. We have a very easy schedule going into the end of the season. We got a lot of home games, a lot of trash teams, as you just saw. Marlins Nationals, you know? So, I got to turn this gate down. I'm not going to do it right now because it's going to fuck up the whole broadcast, but I got to turn this gate down at some point. Um, so, yeah. I think that's uh, that pretty much wraps that up. Besides that, man, I talked to a good homie of mine yesterday. It was a nice nice phone conversation I hadn't actually spoken to him like spoken to him spoken to him in a while and uh, we was basically talking about you know the things that inspire us and the things that we've achieved the things that we weren't able to achieve and uh, he was able to give me some advice yesterday I was uh, I was actually literally just asking him for like ideas to make time pass on this show or this you know this show the wake and bake show and he ain't really give me nothing which you know that's cool I do that a lot. I, I fish for uh, I fish for content and ideas and shit all the time. And when somebody isn't necessarily like, "Ooh, I got a bunch for you," I ain't tripping because I come back. I come back days and days. I come back. So with him, I asked him for that, but he ended up not giving me that. He gave me something I fucking needed though. What he gave me was I told him that I was a little bit discouraged about everything that happened yesterday. Like my whole stream was just fucking frustration yesterday. Um, I told him I spent money and shit and now, you know, despite the massive amounts of hours and time that I spent learning this shit, I don't mind that because I'm a, I'm a learner. I like learning, you know, and plus on top of that, I could, I could go pass that off. I, I helped my man practice. So I helped my man practice needed, practice needed his name. I helped him do a, a good bit, which if everybody, if, if everything ended the day, I would feel grateful for the opportunity to be able to help my guy or do a favor for my guy. So I'm always about that. That's cool for me. Um, but it's really more about like the journey. The journey. I'm sitting here and I'm I'm contemplating how much work I might have to do and how long I'm gonna have to do that work in order to get anything back, right? But that's selfish as shit. I remember somebody uh I can't remember who it was. It might have been Seth Godin, but it was one of one book that I read where the homie was like, too many people start businesses and expect them shits to just feed them. And it's like, do you raise a baby and expect the baby to just feed you? No, you have to raise the baby, put years into the baby, teach the baby to be self-sustaining, give the baby skills, give the baby opportunities. And then eventually after making its own way and being sustainable, the baby will be able to help you maintain your lifestyle, ideally, if the baby is, 
you know, successful, if it's a successful baby. So it's the same thing with business. You don't just start that shit and be like, all right, now where the money at? I gotta, I gotta flex. Nah, you start that shit and then you count. You know, you count days, you count progress, you count milestones, you count achievements, and you gather all that shit up until you got a big bag of it. And then before you know it, you'll be swimming in motherfucking achievements and support and then maybe some money. But uh, so I, I've read it, I've seen it, I've seen it play out, but I, was, I, I wasn't thinking about how important it was to appreciate the journey. So my man's basically, he didn't say appreciate the journey. What he said was, well, you know, you just got to stay consistent. So with me right here, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie. I was discouraged. I was discouraged a couple times for a couple different reasons. I was discouraged because I was like, I started this whole thing because I was like, I want to play video games and people apparently watch people play video games. So I'm going to see if I can get people to watch people watch me play video games. And my niggas was like, yo, you playing games all the time. You might as well stream. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then this shit turned into me having to learn how to set it up, me having to fucking do research and figure out all the different tech situations and nuances and shit, me having to go on Twitch and actually watch streams to see what motherfuckers be doing and talking about, me getting into a whole different platform, uh, me learning like fucking how to do these overlays and panels and shit like that, and then me learning how to do OBS. And then once I learned OBS, I liked it so much more than the Twitch app, I was like, damn, I need to go figure out how to do this on my computer. So I had to go buy a fucking, uh, 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 like, what is it called? It's called a capture card. I had to go buy a capture card and I had to go buy a hub. Luckily I had everything else. I bought a webcam, I bought a green screen. Um, and luckily I had a bunch of other shit. I had the mic, I had the computer, I had a bunch of other cables and shit. Um, so yeah, and I bought a new Xbox. So, I was like, discouraged as fuck. Discouraged as fuck because there's days where I seen motherfuckers hang out on here and I appreciate it and I loved it. And it is far and few between it seems nowadays. Like, motherfuckers come and chill or motherfuckers will kick it for a long ass time and don't say nothing. And that has been discouraging to me just a little bit. And then uh, my homie practice needed. He's successful and I love seeing it and I'm happy as shit to see it. Every time I go in there, the niggas got more followers, he got his homies, he got the family, he got niggas subscribing now. Bro, I'm happy as shit for my nigga. I come back to my shit, I'm still on 28. I've been on 28 for like two weeks, I think. And then I have I have like the chat goals and all of that shit. Um, but I changed like how I've, I'm, I'm on OBS now looking at it, so I'm not sure how it looks to everybody, but yeah, man. So if you if you get the opportunity, follow me on a Fancy Clown on Twitch at a Fancy Clown on Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Follow your boy because I'm doing this shit every day, and I'm trying to appreciate the journey, baby. Um, I want to do it with you, and I want to do it with you. So yeah, I was I was basically just like, damn, why the fuck am I on 28 for so long? So now I'm like doing research and shit, and I'm trying to figure out why I suck. And I, at one at a couple weeks ago, I was like, damn, I get it. I understand why people come in and lurk and chill and watch because niggas is a little bit likable, you know? And my homie said that to me. So I was like, damn, that's word. Okay, I appreciate that. I can run with that. But you know what? I ain't got no followers since then. And I'm like, damn, is niggas not likable? But I can't do that. I can't sit here and just be all fucking willy nilly up and down with the wind every time something go my way or don't go my way. It's about consistency. It's about balance. You know what I'm saying? I did that shit a couple of weeks ago. Consistency is key. Balance is the only way. I made that song. I wrote that song. I ain't got it on my SoundCloud, so y'all not gonna hear it today. But balance is the only way, bro. And consistency is key. So my man told me, keep going, bro. It don't matter. Niggas wanna say shit, niggas don't wanna say shit. It don't matter. Just keep going, be consistent. You'll get better as you're consistent. Motherfuckers will find you for your consistency and you will create an air of authority, relatability, whatever, whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? By being consistent, by actually showing some type of passion, you know? And uh, that's just the rules to the universe. Like I was saying yesterday, I said, yo, you put out that energy, 
That shit don't go away. Energy doesn't get destroyed or created. It just gets redistributed. So when you put energy out, that shit goes somewhere, bro. It goes somewhere. And the thing is, you got to trust that it's going to go somewhere. And you got to trust that it's going to come back to you. So that's the shit I've been on. Um, and that was from a conversation with the homie yesterday. So shout out to him. He's actually, he on Twitch now. He's Shea with the Butter, man. Shout out to Shea with the Butter. Uh, I need to hit that nigga up and tell him good morning. So yeah, besides that, where we at right now? Who are we, a couple minutes in? Yeah, see, I done talked for fucking damn near an hour on this motherfucker. Let me go ahead and take a little uh, water break. You go ahead and drink some coffee too. Enjoy yourself, man. Treat yourself. song from a couple years back theme fitting at the time I was just sitting here looking at that shit for so long I was like fuck it let me hear that bitch hope you enjoyed it um, so this is going to be the part where I talk about the shit that everybody else is pretty much afraid to talk about or I say the stuff that's um, going to be making people hate me or not want to support my shit but I'm going to call it realness and I'm going to say that if it's bothersome then I don't know. You could just not watch. Or if it's bothersome, I don't know. I don't know. Let's just get into it. So a couple years ago on my podcast, I talked about the swimmer at Penn. I used to work at Penn. So I got a lot of like, you know, I love it. But the swimmer at Penn, um, female athlete, was trans. So... um 
Leah Thomas is her name. And Leah Thomas was born a male. And Leah Thomas was an incredible swimmer and was just running through trash in these women at swimming. Uh, now, I talked about it, and uh, I think that that Jenner lady talked about it too. Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn. Caitlyn Jenner talked about it. But it was a couple years ago. It was a number of years ago. But I remember talking about it, and I remember thinking to myself how... Okay, so the article that I read, because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the like the beginning of the story. The article that I read actually was saying that like her teammates were getting a petition signed to get her kicked off the team. And I was like, okay, fuck how I feel. Her own teammates don't want her on the team. I imagine for a, a number of reasons. One, they might feel uncomfortable around her, which I mean, you can blame people for how they feel, but why is my computer making fucking noise? It's kind of getting on my nerves and I need to make it stop. I don't even have an app open. Anyway, uh, you can't really blame people for how they feel. And you can say that maybe they should have been a little bit more open-minded and maybe they shouldn't be uncomfortable, you know, changing and being and interacting with somebody who is trans, you know? Maybe you could say that. I don't know. Maybe you could say that. But one thing you can't say is that it's fair. It's not fair. Because um, Leah Thomas was born with a different type of bones, like thicker, denser bones. Leah Thomas was born with um, bigger, <clears throat> thicker, denser muscle mass. Uh, Leah Thomas was born with bigger lungs. Leah Thomas was born with bigger extremities that can catch more water. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so Leah Thomas had a number of marked advantages that I, I will go ahead and say I felt like it made it a little unfair for her teammates when they was competing against one another, even when they was competing for one another. You know what I mean? Because when it, when it comes down to it, in, a, in the spirit of good sportsmanship, there's fairness, you know? I don't know if that's a plane or a train. You hear it? But anyway, in the spirit of good sportsmanship, there's fairness, ideally. So there's been a lot of people talking about this over the last number of years. Um, but it was just decided that a couple of days ago, that Leah Thomas would be stripped of her actually no Leah Thomas is now banned from competing in female sports okay that's one step um that's what people have decided if it were my choice I would say that that's a fair decision because Leah Thomas had some unfair advantages when competing now, one thing I remember that the, the article mentioned that I found was ironic. Uh, Leah Thomas's best friend was also a trans female swimmer. But Leah Thomas's best friend was actually a, a, a female who transitioned to a male, but still competed as a female. Now, there's a couple of jokes that I've heard people make there, or there's a couple of things that I heard people say there, which is, of course, because a woman is not going to knowingly jump into a field of men and say, yo, let's compete. But a man will often knowingly, a born man, will often knowingly jump into a field of woman and go, yo, let's compete. Let's compete. So, I mean, I'm not gonna make that joke. I'm just gonna say it's ironic. It's very ironic. So um, Leah Thomas, Leah Thomas has been uh, banned from performing, and some people want to take it a little step further. Some people actually want to say Leah Thomas should have to give back all the medals. How you feel about that? I mean, the medal part, I do feel like it's fair, but. 
when it comes down to it, I feel like kind of like what's done is done in a lot of those cases. And the experience itself is already played out. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people might feel redeemed or uh, adjudicated or I don't know what word I'm looking for. Some people might feel some type of good energy from having, you know, received a medal in the mail and, and people saying, yo, that day where you thought you lost, you didn't lose. You won. Some people might have some vindication from that. And that's a good thing. And, you know, I, I like that. I feel like our, uh, artists, athletes, creators, performers, workers, motherfuckers who get work done, motherfuckers who put shit in, motherfuckers who put that energy out, you know? I feel like they should all be compensated. You know? I feel like life should go that way. But who am I? A romantic. Back to the word of the day. Romance, baby. So, yeah. That happened with the uh, the world of swimming and such. Uh, in other news, Katie Ledecky is the GOAT. Katie Ledecky beat Michael Phelps' record as a woman. A real born woman. She the goat. She the motherfucking goat. How she do it? All technique. All breathing. All technique. That shit is impressive. Anyways, I was gonna try to push this joint to an hour, but no need. I feel like we uh we got said what needed to be said. I feel like I shared a bunch enough uh a bunch enough right this is what happened when I'm monitoring myself I can hear my voice but it's on like a two second delay so I hear myself talking I, I really have to have my thought complete as fuck because I'm distracting myself um oh also I hear the gate cutting off like maybe the end of my sentence or a certain word that I'm like so I'm, I'm still monitoring that and shit so forgive me my public speaking is like trash right now but um I think I shared enough romance for the day and hopefully you know you uh you have a wonderful and romantic day, and uh, hopefully you've heard something today that can propel you into greatness. And um, that's what we all about here. Propellance, 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 is that a word? Into greatness. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, I wanna hear another one of my damn songs. I ain't gonna lie, I love my music. Uh, so, I don't know where to play though, like, like uh, I could just do anything at random and shit. Um, I got that much confidence. I'm that fucking nice. Uh, I'm gonna just stop there. I'm gonna just stop right there. This song is not good. It's 43 seconds, so I know it's not a song. It's not a full song. Should I play it though? Or how about I play it and then play the next song? And let it like go straight to the next song. I because I know the next song is sad. It's called Lonely. So let's do that. Let's play some sad songs because we're romantic. On a, let's play some sad songs on the way out. Um, nah, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Let's fucking do it. I ain't got nothing else to say. Um, hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you, uh, you enjoy coming back tomorrow. It's been wonderful. Hopefully you'll prepare the greatness and uh, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. said I'm confident and I can play anything nigga that's the worst thing that I could have imagined right there
play defense, I play defense between being at home and being with my homies. I just pretend, I just pretend again. Everyone knows, but don't nobody know me. Wanna see something bad happen to me? Wanna see him screw me? Wanna see him see right through me? Just, just wanna call for a new G. That's just what's in the cards for a true G. So I gotta rise above it like a 2 3. If I want to cut to reflect a true me, treat this shit like it's below me like I'm blue G. Like I said, I float above it like a 23. And I gotta give them everything they wanna see. Every day that I wake up and just look to the knees. Pray, let me live on me till 103. A big difference, a big difference between being alone and, and being, being real, real lonely. A big difference, a big difference between being alone and, and being, being alone. with my homies. A big difference, a big difference between being alone and being real lonely. A big difference, a big difference between being alone. I play defense, I play defense between being at home and being with my homies. I just pretend, I just pretend again. Everyone knows, but don't nobody know me. Yeah, man. Last time. Thanks for tuning in. Man. God bless y'all. See y'all tomorrow, 10 o'clock, bright and early. Peace.